Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to be doing an experiment for you showing you a little bit about how acids and bases work and acid base color changing indicators. We're going to be doing that through a serial dilution to make uh, 15 different solutions and then testing them with indicators. So here we've got a number of water molecule models to represent a pure sample of water. You can see a very tiny number of them have actually reacted with each other where one water molecule lost a hydrogen to another, creating a hydronium ion and a hydroxide ion. But because this is pure water, the number of hydroxide ions is equal to the number of hydronium ions, and this is considered neutral. When hydrochloric acid, or HCl, is added, what happens is that the HCl molecules will lose their hydrogens to water molecules and now there are more hydronium ions than hydroxide ions making this solution acidic. When sodium hydroxide, a base, is added, sodium and hydroxide, uh, they split apart, the sodium ions float around and the hydroxide ions float around and now removing all the regular water molecules, you can see in this solution there are more hydroxides than hydroniums, making this solution basic. In the first part of this experiment, I'm going to be creating seven different solutions that all have varying amounts of HCl in them. I've numbered them zero through six. I'm gonna be creating solution zero using some of this stock hydrochloric acid solution. You can see its concentration is two molar. And I'm going to be using five milliliters of this and five milliliters of distilled water to create this solution. For solution number one, I'm going to be taking nine milliliters of water and one milliliter from test tube zero, mixing them together. For test tube two, I'm going to be using nine milliliters of water and one milliliter from test tube one. For test tube three, nine milliliters of water and one mil of the solution from test tube two, and so on. That is called a serial dilution. Now for test tube seven, I'm just gonna be filling that with some plain distilled water. In the next part of this, I'm going to be making various sodium hydroxide solutions. I'm gonna be starting with a two molar stock solution of sodium hydroxide. And I'm gonna be starting actually with test tube 14. In test tube 14, there will be five milliliters of this with five milliliters of water. I'm then going to create the solution for test tube 13, which will be nine milliliters of water and one milliliter from test tube 14. Test tube 12 will be nine mils of water and one mil from 13. Test tube 11 will be nine mils of water and one mil from 12.
All right. So now we've got all of our test tubes made. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all HCL decreasing in their concentration. Test tube seven, distilled water. And test tubes eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, increasing in concentration in sodium hydroxide with 14 being the most concentrated. What we're going to do now, because these solutions really look very similar, you can't tell much difference between them. So we're going to be looking at color change indicators for acids and bases. I've picked three very common ones. We're going to see bromothymol blue, what it does to different acid-base solutions, phenolphthalein, and one called universal indicator. To do that, I'm going to be putting drops of these different solutions into well plates and then adding some of the indicator to them. So the next thing is to test the indicators. I'm going to start with bromothymol blue and add a drop to each of these going across. Now, as you can see, in the most acidic solutions, the BTB is a yellow color. In the intermediate but still acidic solutions, through neutral and some of the slightly basic solutions, it's green. And through the very basic solutions, it is blue. Next is phenolphthalein. So phenolphthalein, you can see, it doesn't cause any change in acidic solutions or neutral and right around this amount of hydroxide starts to turn light pink and then deep pink for the most basic solutions. Last is universal. And with the universal, you can see in the most acidic range, red, then orange, and then in the intermediate range of acidity, greens, neutral, and then a little bit uh, in the weekly basic category, still green, then transitioning to uh, blue-green, and finally purple in the most basic solutions. Now, in your calculations, you're actually going to be using a dilution equation to calculate the different concentrations of hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide in the various solutions that were created. And you'll use those to calculate the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide, as well as their pH and their pOH. Understanding how the different indicators change color with different pHs is the goal. And those calculations and these results, these colors, will help you understand that better. Thank you.